Secondary storage solutions in personal computers have evolved dramatically over the last few decades. Prices have dropped, sizes have shrunk, and capacities have skyrocketed. If you are even remotely into PC building, you already know that NVMe M.2 drives have taken over the storage market in the recent years. The price to capacity ratio for these drives has improved significantly. Just last year, I was tracking the biggest commercially available NVMe drives, the 8TB models, dropping from nearly $1000 to about $500. That's a huge price cut. Not to mention, their ultra complex size and lack of extra power requirements are making them a great choice for external storage solutions as well. Now, while there are some NAS and DAS solutions out there for NVMe drives, like the Ugreen NVMe NAS, Asus 8 Bay NVMe, or the OWC 4 Bay Thunderbolt enclosure, these are still ridiculously expensive for what they offer. They're great products, no doubt, but the prices are borderline prohibitive. The reason? NVMe drives rely on PCIe lanes instead of the older SATA interface, which means higher implementation costs since PCIe-based controllers are newer and are more expensive. Finding a good compact motherboard with multiple NVMe ports at an affordable price is surprisingly difficult. One possible workaround is using an ITX port with an NVMe controller card in the PCIe X16 slot, but that quickly turns into a bulky, overcomplicated setup. There is still a lot of room for innovation in the NVMe-based architectures, but for now, most available solutions are taking advantage of this niche market. Recently though, we have started seeing some more affordable options. Linus made a video on the ARM-based friendly Elac CM3588 port, which could be a decent solution. There have also been Raspberry Pi NAS projects, though many recent tastes have shown they are not quite worth it yet. However, most of these are ARM-based boards, limiting some options for certain use cases. A few months ago, Minisforum teased the 6 bay NVMe NAS, but it's unclear if it ever made it to the market. Similarly, DF Robot had a similar board that seemed promising, but again, no solid release. That brings us to CWWK. This company has started making compact, cost-effective NVMe and SATA NAS solutions based on Intel x86 architectures, and today, we are checking out their 4-bay NVMe NAS mini PC, which starts at about $150 for the lowest configuration. The challenge with fitting multiple NVMe drives into such small enclosures is that many of these solutions end up sharing PCIe bandwidth, but for a NAS, that's not a deal breaker, since the real bottleneck will be the network speed, whether that's a 2.5G card or a 10G card. As long as the system remains stable and reliable, we are looking at a very compact and cost-effective NVMe-based external storage solution. Now, in some of the recent videos covering the board, especially those from NAS compares, it's been pointed out that while the CWWK NAS is a great option for the price, it does come with two major issues, heat management and the lack of sufficient external ports. Since the board only comes with 4 NVMe base, most of the users will have to end up installing the OS on a USB stick to keep things compact. There is an external case available, but it doesn't offer options for extra SATA drive connections or an internal fan for NVMe cooling. To tackle these issues and create a more long-term all-in-one enclosure, I designed and 3D printed a custom case. This case includes space for an additional fan to cool the NVMe bay, printed in PETG and ABS for better heat resistance. As for the OS storage, I am replacing the USB stick options with an internal SATA SSD board taken out from a SATA drive, which connects via micro SATA ports included on the board. This keeps the two external USB ports free for peripherals and maintains a cleaner setup. Let's dive into the installation. First, we open up the two parts of the board. This gives us a great look at how a single PCIe port is split into four through a custom connector, forcing the four NVMe drives to share bandwidth. Also, if you didn't need a NAS at some point, the bottom part can be reused as a super compact mini PC for those embedded computing needs. The board also includes a single DDR5 RAM slot, where I installed a 32GB stick. There's a dedicated M.2 slot for Wi-Fi if you want to add an antenna, but I'm skipping that today since the board already comes with dual 2.5G Ethernet ports, which is often more preferable than wireless for a NAS device. Next, I connected the extracted SATA SSD board to the bespoke SATA connector, then hooked it up to the SATA port on the board. The idea here is to use the free space between the two boards to house the SATA PCB. The mini PC includes a stock CPU fan, which I connected to the first port, then I added an additional PWM fan via a converter to the second port. This extra fan provides active cooling for the NVMe drives. With everything connected, I'd started installing the NVMe drives. I'm using these small but highly effective M.2 heat sinks from AliExpress to help with the heat dissipations. The second fan sits on top, pulling heat away from the drives. If you look closely, I have added air ventilation pads on both sides of the case, allowing for proper airflow. 
Now, we carefully lower the board into the case and screw it to the bottom of the case through the CPU fan and onto the CPU heatsink. The upper fan can be clipped onto the SSD heatsinks with some small hooks for a more secure fit, but I felt lazy today and instead just used some tape to rest it on top of the heatsink as it will be sandwiched anyways. Finally, we close up the case using these countershunk screws and some threaded inserts, completing the build. Before I went any further, I just took a moment to appreciate the ridiculously small size of this machine. It's amazing that such a small footprint can house a total of about 32 terabytes of secondary storage, maybe even more in the future, that to a network attached storage setup with a full and capable computer in it. For reference, this is how small this device is compared to my main NAS that I built just a couple of years ago, and I can literally fit this small NAS inside my bigger NAS. Weight-wise, it only weighs about 700 grams, making it super travel-friendly. Technology has come so far that we don't really appreciate it enough in the pursuit of having more and more by the day, and builds like this kind of help me remember that from time to time. To test the system, I installed TrueNAS Core on the SATA drive that we installed earlier, leaving the four NVMe drives free to be used in the actual storage pools. I set up a few SMB shares and mapped them from my laptop as remote drives. Running a few speed tests with 8K codecs over the 2.5G Ethernet ports on my laptop and the NAS confront full utilization of the 2.5G bandwidth. If you are feeling a little ambitious, you could link both 2.5G ports for a combined 5G bandwidth, but I am a little lazy for that today. Others have also tested the internal transfer speeds of these drives, which comes in at around 800 Mbps, but for this NAS setup, it's not a primary concern. I also ran some temperature tests. After a few hours of usage, the CPU peaked at around 50 degrees Celsius, while the NVMe drives hit about 30 to 40 degrees. Not bad at all, considering it's a plastic enclosure with only active fan cooling. If weight isn't an issue, you could CNC the case out of metal for additional passive cooling. In terms of power consumption, the system pulls about 15 to 20 watts under load. As you can see, this build resulted in a compact, travel-friendly NVMe NAS that costs a fraction of the price of a commercial alternative. If you are a bit tech-savvy, you can even set this up as a DAS by configuring it properly in true NAS, letting you mount it directly as a local storage. One thing to keep in mind though, this board isn't the most polished product out there. The super tiny SATA connection, for example, can be very finicky, and some users have reported issues with it not working reliably. Also, since the board relies on a single PCIe split, losing that port would effectively render the whole system useless, even if the other components remain functional. That being said, if you're looking for an affordable and compact NVMe-based external storage solution, the CWWK boards are among the very few x86 options out there that won't break the bank. There are newer versions of this board as well, but from what I have seen, their form factors are pretty similar, so my case design should be compatible with those too. If you want to build this yourself, I'll share my 3D print files in the description below. And if you know of any other compact multi-bay NVMe boards, let me know in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for an upgrade. As always, thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Cheers.